Hello, so today I'm going to be talking about some of the best fiction paperbacks of 2017. So these are the kind of books that I guess are the most well received, therefore they're kind of the popular books I guess. I'm the kind of person that likes new releases as much as I like backlist books, as much as I like some of the popular books, as much as I like some of the unpopular books, some of the unknown books. I like it all, basically. But at the minute we're panning over a table that's looking at some of the best paperbacks. I think I've read a total of five or six on here and I have a couple on my radar to read. Some of them I have absolutely no interest in whatsoever but these are the books and um, let's let's chat about them. Hot Milk by Deborah Levy. This is obviously the hardback edition but the paperback did indeed come out this year. They've kept the same image which I'm really pleased about. I think that it's really striking and I love the title and I just think that the image and the title really suits the novel as well. Um, this was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize in 2016 and rightly so. I love this book. I really really love this book. It's probably, it was one of my favourite books of 2016 and it's probably one of my top books ever. I love the writing in this. I think it's incredible. It's one of those ones that you read and you know that there's so much written in between the lines. It says so much more than maybe what you're getting so it's one that I definitely want to return to at some point. Um, it does tell the story of a mother and daughter and it explores the idea of a psychosomatic illness. It's a little bit weird in that it's really dreamlike but it's just gorgeous the writing in this I can't tell you enough if you like literary fiction I really do highly recommend this one. Next up we've got Autumn by Ali Smith I have mentioned this on my channel before um everyone knows that Shaz loves it um I love this one to say it again I do really love it um Ali Smith is doing a quartet of books through the season so this is Autumn, Winter has recently come out and then obviously it'll be Spring and Summer. She's writing them as things are happening so they're very current. So this one is set during the time that Brexit was happening. It was very weird for me to read a book that felt so up-to-date, that it felt so current and it felt so relevant. I'm glad that I read this you know as soon as I could. Um, it's one that I think that people should read soon and it, I mean it's still it'll still be relevant for years to come but I think that there's something really interesting about reading something that feels like it's happening now. Um, by no means is this a book about Brexit, that's just the general setting. It tells the story of a relationship between a young girl and her neighbour over many years. It focuses on art. It, you know, it's one of those books that has a lot in it. Um, but for me, it's definitely, again, the writing in this is just incredible. It's poetic, it's immersive, it's sublime. Next up, we've got The Par. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful in my beautiful accent? Oh, God. Um, the amount of times I had to avoid saying this to people um, when it won, because it won the Bailey's Women Prize for Fiction, so a lot of people were asking about it, and I just couldn't say the title because people don't understand it in my accent. But yes, this one by Naomi Alderman. So, like I said, won the Women's Bailey's Prize for Fiction. I had this on my radar before it even came out. I remember seeing it on books that were coming soon, and I saw the concept of it and just fell in love with it. I have to say, having read it, eh. It's all right. I think that the idea is definitely better than the execution. I think that it's it's a big topic to tackle in such a short book. Um, if you don't know, it is basically exploring the idea that women are more powerful than men. Powerful, again. Um, so yes, women are stronger than men in that they can strike them down with just one touch. And it's a fascinating concept because it's not one that I've ever seen anywhere else. There's too many characters in it, to be honest. Every chapter has a different character that's telling a story. It spans over many years. There's just too much going on in such a short space of time. But I think that the idea is really good. And I love the beginning and love the ending. I have to say, I did really, really love the ending. Um, there's another thing that's quite interesting about it is that it's got these little inserts that make it look like a history book, if I could find one. Um, so it's things like that. So it's kind of told like this is like history, this is something that's happened in the past. So I like that aspect of it. The little inserts of images um, weren't necessarily necessary. Necessarily necessary. Let's just go with it. I can see why it won the Women's Bailey's Prize for Fiction. I think that, you know, the subject that it's exploring is definitely important. I just think the execution could have been better. But as far as I'm aware, I think that this is a debut novel. And I think on that front, it's brilliant. And I think that it's a big subject, a big concept to tackle. I know that Margaret Atwood was championing this one a lot. Um, but yeah, it's not one that I would say is terrible, but it's also not one that I would say is brilliant. And I can understand why it's made it onto this list. Next up we've got Do Not Say We Have Nothing. This is the larger format edition that came out first. 
There is a smaller format paperback now, um, but this is the one that I've got. It was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize. I also think that it was on the shortlist for Women's Bailey's Prize for Fiction. It was on something else. Um, I quite like this one, but it hasn't really stuck with me that well. I think it's one that I'd maybe maybe read again at some point. It spans over many generations and explores a lot of Chinese history. There's a lot of music in this, and I think that for me that's maybe why I liked it, because I've got a little bit of a background in music in that my mum was a piano teacher and she taught me to play piano, so there was a feeling of nostalgia in this for me, but I think if you've got no interest in music, in particular classical music, then I feel like that this might be a little bit dull for a lot of people. I think that it's one that's definitely a little bit more niche. I'm kind of surprised that it's in the best books of 2017, but a lot of people loved it. I think I liked it, but it's not one that I would call it like a favourite or anything. Um, but I'm still pleased to see it there on the list. Next up we've got The Tobacconist. Um, this is actually the proof copy, so this isn't the final edition. It looks a little bit more like this one. So this is A Whole Life, which we all know is Sharon's favourite book. Um, so The Tobacconist basically looks the same as this, but it's got that image on the front instead. So I love the simplicity of the design of these. Um, so I absolutely love A Whole Life, obviously, um, and then I read this one second, and I, I love this one too, but it was definitely not as strong as A Whole Life. There's definitely the similar sort of melancholic tone, and I love how he writes, um, but this one's was maybe a little bit more twee, a little bit more quirky and offbeat, a little bit more unrealistic maybe, but I still loved it. I'm not saying unrealistic in a bad way. I think it's just because Freud features in it, which <laughs> felt a little bit strange. Um, it basically tells the story of a young guy who leaves home to become a tobacconist. It's set during the 1930s and Professor Freud ends up becoming a regular customer and it becomes a story about their bond together. So it's definitely a bit of a strange one, um, but I just, I love how he writes. This one he actually wrote first, but it was translated second. So he actually wrote The Tobacconist followed by A Whole Life, but A Whole Life was translated first followed by The Tobacconist. Um, and I just really want to read everything that this author has to write because I just love his style. Um, but yes, I'm really pleased to see this one on the table because Again, I just, I really do like these books. Next up, we've got The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. This again is obviously the hardback. It won the Waterstones Book of the Year last year and it came out in paperback this year, which I find so hard to believe. I feel like this has been out forever, to be perfectly honest. I'm kind of sick of hearing about it and seeing it. Uh, I mean, it's a good book. I didn't particularly love it, but I know that I had trouble concentrating whenever I was reading this. Um, so I think it was more of a it's not you, it's me kind of situation that I had going on with this one. Um, it's a historical fiction novel. It definitely explores ideas of religion and science, which is interesting. It's a good story. I'm just, oh, to be yes, I'm just kind of bored of talking about it and hearing about it. So, and I'm sure you guys are too, because I feel like it's everywhere. <laughs> it's a good book. I, I, I feel like other people probably love it a lot more than I did. I, I know that I need to give it another chance. And I do think that it is a gorgeous book. And again, they've kept the same design for the paperback, which I'm pleased to see. Um, but yeah, there's that one. I'm not going to say too much more because like I said, I'm kind of bored of it. But that, that you know, I feel like that's kind of mean. Oh well. Next up, we've got a book that I do not have the dust jacket for, but it is Hag Seed by Margaret Atwood. I'll put an image here somewhere. Um, I haven't read this one yet, but I have it to read. I know that this is part of the Hogarth Shakespeare series, so there's a number of different books that were coming out that were um, sort of interpretations of Shakespeare's plays. This one I know is on The Tempest. I've heard a lot of good things about this one, but it's not particularly high on my TBR. If you've read it, I'd love to know what you think. If it's one that you think that I should read sooner, please push me to do so, because at the minute it's just kind of sitting on my shelf and I feel like, am I going to get to it before the end of the year? Probably not. Am I going to get to it next year? Probably not. I don't know. Who knows? I might. It's like, you know, I think Margaret Atwood's a terrific writer. Um, I love The Handmaid's Tale, one of my favourite books ever. But for some reason, I just don't feel like picking this up just yet. But if you have read it and you think that it's great and you think that I should read it sooner, do let me know. Next up, we've got The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon. I have not read this one yet. It's been on my shelf for quite some time. To be perfectly honest, it's not overly high on my TBR. So if you have read this and you love it, please let me know about it and maybe I'll bump it up higher because I feel like I'm not going to get to it anytime soon. So I need a little bit of encouragement with this one. Um, it's set in the 1970s in a small town or village and is, there's a bit of a murder mystery kind of story going on. I find the title funny 
Um, I remember when I first noticed this one and it did intrigue me and it did stand out but I just again it's not one that I'm like overly inclined to kind of get excited about but yeah it's it's on my shelf so I'll get to it eventually and I know that she's got another one coming out next year as well so maybe I'll want to read it before that who knows but yeah do let me know if you have read this one I'd love to know your thoughts. We've got My Name is Lucy Barton by Elizabeth Strout on the list I don't have a physical copy of this book but I did read it um and I did enjoy it but it hasn't really stuck with me that well it tells a story of a mother and daughter and they have a very complex relationship um Lucy Barton has recently had a minor operation and her mother comes to see her they haven't spoken for years it's just them sort of discussing the kind of life that they had before I really loved all of Kedere that Elizabeth Strout wrote. Um, really great book, really great TV adaptation as well. One of the best characters I have ever seen come to life on a page. Um, so unlikable yet likable and just complex and full of layers, you know, fantastic, fantastic character and yeah. So I think for me Olive Kitteridge is like a million times better than My Name is Lucy Barton but still a very good book and still one that has definitely been really well received this year. The Girls by Emma Klein um, has made it onto the list, no surprise to see it here at all. There was so much hype around this one when it came out in hardback and it's done very well in paperback as well. Um, this one is based on the Manson murders but what's really interesting about it is that it doesn't focus on the murders that take place it actually focuses on the characters so it looks at how easy it is for young girls to be recruited into a cult and to ultimately murder so it's very disturbing I like that kind of psychological aspect to it I really did enjoy that kind of approach to it but I think for me at the end of it I was left more interested in the actual Manson murders um, so I wanted to look into that a little bit more rather than this story that was kind of made up based on that. Um, so I was less interested in the book and more interested in the actual truth of the Manson murders more than anything but yeah an interesting book and I didn't I did really like the approach and I think that it was very good for a debut novel. The Gustav Sonata I'm so pleased to see this here on the list by Rose Tremaine. I remember this book and I wasn't I wasn't interested in it in the slightest. I kind of looked at it and kind of deemed it a, an old lady book, I guess, and how wrong I was. Um, I was recommended it. Someone actually told me that it was a little bit like A Whole Life, which we know is my favourite book. And I can see the comparison in terms of the tone. Um, so there's this kind of beautiful sadness, which I'm going to say that so many times in these videos. Beautiful sadness. I love it. I love it. That's like the perfect tone for me. And the Gustav Sonata definitely nails that tone perfectly so I automatically fell in love with it. If you like Sarah Winman's The Tin Man I do think that the Gustav Sonata has a very similar sort of feel. Um, completely different stories in many ways but there's something similar about those two. This one was set in Switzerland during the war so definitely an interesting time period and it focuses on the relationship between these two men um, but yeah just beautiful writing, beautiful setting, beautiful story, just fantastic and just it's made me really want to read everything by Rose Tremaine. I do have up there the sacred country so I have that to read but I just want to read all of her books now because I think that her storytelling and her entire craft was just incredible in this one um if you haven't read it read it the Underground Railroad by Coulson Whitehead. This book has been everywhere this year. It has won everything this year. It has been shortlisted for everything this year. I don't really get it. I, I didn't really get on with it that well. I just felt really like far from it. I was really distant from it. I didn't feel connected to it which is sad because everyone seems to love it. I found it really interesting that it won the Arthur C. Clarke Award which is obviously a science fiction award. This isn't a science fiction book. Um, it's got some magical realism in there um, but it's basically about the story of Cora, a young slave girl trying to escape and she escapes on the Underground Railroad so that's where the magical realism element comes into it. Um, but yeah, like I said, I didn't love it but everyone else seems to so if you're interested in it, go ahead and read it. Those are the books that I have read or have to read that have made it on to the list of the best paperbacks in fiction in 2017. I'm pretty pleased with how many I've actually read. It's quite impressive um, as someone who doesn't always get sort of hyped up by the books that are popular but these are books that I just so happen to be interested in um, so I'm quite pleased that they have made it onto the list definitely. If you've read any of the books that are on the table do let me know. Um, there's some other ones that I'm kind of interested in like Emma Donoghue's Wonder and um, possibly the Anne Patchett one. I was kind of interested in the Keeper of Lost things as well but I've heard that that's super twee therefore it's kind of made up off my list but yeah let me know your thoughts and I will see you again soon. Bye!